Dear students, today we continue the course Theoretical Foundations of Physical Culture and Sports. And today we will talk about social biological basis of physical culture in this lecture. My name is Dr. Anastasia Shvetko. I'm assistant professor at the Department of Physical Education and Sports, Kazan Federal University. Social biological basis of physical culture is a complex of biomedical knowledge, primarily in anatomy, physiology, morphology, hygiene, and medicine. Human bodies are both biological and social in nature. They are biological in their cooperativity, constantly carrying out multitudes of physiological processes, and social is that we rely upon bodies to carry forth our interactions with the world communication, and etc. Labor and influence of social environment in the process of human development have developed influenced biological characteristics of modern human body and its environment. The biological mechanisms of the body interact with the person's psychological and social life. So the human body is a unified, complicated, highly organized system that is in constant contact with the changing environmental condi conditions. Distinctive feature of a person is conscious and active impact on external, natural and social conditions life that determine his life expectancy, fertility or reproduction, working capacity, general health, and etc. Without knowledge about the structure of the human body, about the laws of individual functioning of the organs and systems of the body, it is impossible to organize the process of forming a healthy lifestyle and physical fitness. So let's talk about each system um, within our human bo body in a separate, in a separate uh, way. So the body is a complicated biological system. All its organs are interconnected and interacted. Its structures and functions can be understood as various levels, at chemical level, at cellular level within the cell and the tissue, so the layers of tissue in stomach wall, for example. Also on the level of organs, body systems such as digestive, cardiorespiratory, cardiac system and others, and organisms, or the whole body in its own complex. In this context, a system can be defined as a group of body organs or structures that together perform one or more vital functions. The body system maintains homeostasis, which is essential for the survival of the cell. But what is the cell? The cell is an elementary, universal structure. It is a unit of the living matter which has ability to grow, regenerate, reproduce, pass on genetic information and adapt to environmental conditions. Any disruption in homeostasis which occur when one or more body system malfunction or function not properly can threaten cell survival and lead to illness and death. Remember the cancer disease which eats the cells, so this is the case. Skeletal system functions at the basis framework of the body, and the entire body are built around the heart framework of skeleton. It is a combination of all the bones and tissues associated with cartilages and joints. Almost all the rigid or solid parts of the body are the main components of the skeletal system. Joints play an important role in skeletal system as it helps in permitting different types of movements at different locations, for example, rotations in a shower. If the skeleton were without joints, then there would be no sign of movements in the human body. A person generally has 200 bones and they all divide into the different bones such as tubular, spongy bones, flat bones, like skull, and mixed, which are at the base of the skull. Let's talk about the muscles. 
skeletal muscles are organs of the vertebral muscular system and typically attached by tendons to bones of the skeleton. The main function is to bring the movement, sustain the body posture and position, and maintain body temperature as well, store nutrients such as carbohydrates, fats and proteins, and stabilize joints. A person has about 600 um, uh, muscles, and most of them are paired muscles, so they work in conjunction with each other, for example, biceps and triceps. Mm -hmm. Skeletal muscles are covered with dense connective tissue membrane from outside. In uh, each muscle, there is an active part, and a passive part, which is the tendon. Muscles divided into long, short, and wide. Together, they support human body weight, maintain a posture, and help people to move. Cardiovascular system pumps blood from the heart to the lungs to get oxygen, which is important for our health and survival. A the heart then sends oxygenated blood through arteries to the rest of the body. The veins carry oxygen for blood back to the organ, which is a heart, main organ of cardiovascular system, and the circulation process starts over. There is a small and a large circulatory circle. The heart is an autonomous automatic device, however its work is corrected by numerous direct and feedback connections coming from various organs and systems of the body. The heart is connected to the central nervous system, which has a regulating effect on its work. So when the central nerve system sends a signal to run faster, when adrenaline starts to produce, then the heart beats faster. Blood is the liquid tissue that circulates in the in, um, system and provides the vital activity in cells and tissues of the body as an organ and physiological system. It consists, it consists of plasma and balanced form elements such as red blood cells or white blood cells or blood platelets and other sub substances. On the picture you can see the heart of an ordinary person and the heart of an athlete. So an athlete's heart has undergone positive adaptations and its uh, increased muscle mass, number of neofilament motors that improve its performance. So it's pumping faster, it's much more stronger, and you can see the tissue of an athlete's heart is much more thicker. As a result, the heart beats much stronger, more efficiently, ejecting higher stroke volume. So athletes have first intense endurance exercise for five hours or more per week, may develop exercise-induced cardiac remodeling, often referred to at its heart. It is where the heart becomes much more stronger and larger than average, and it's a natural response to intensive exercise. That's why exercise is good for your health. Neurohumoral mechanisms regulate blood pressure and blood volume to ensure adequate blood flow for all body organs. The influences of nervous system and hormones on cardiovascular system are referred to collectively as neurohumoral mechanisms of the cardiovascular control. Let's talk about respiratory system. It is also a biological system consisting of specific organs and structures used for gas exchange in, in the humans. And also animals have this system and even plants, but it's just the different uh, organs that take part in this process. So in humans, the lungs and respiratory systems allow us to breathe. They bring oxygen to the body, and we need oxygen for our life. And this process is conducted during inhalation and exhalation. And during the exhalation, we send carbon dioxide out. And during inhalation, we breathe in oxygen. 
and the whole process of this exchange is called respiration. An important feature of the respiratory system is lung capacity ratio, which is called vital capacity abbreviated VC, that can be measured with a spirometer. Lung capacity ratio is an amount of air exhaled after the deepest possible inhalation. So we make a deep breath in and exhale as maximum um, air as we can. So this test is also measures how forcefully one can empty air from the lungs and this test is important for measuring capacity um, at people with different diseases such as uh, asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary, pulmonary disease. Digestion system has three main functions relating to food. Digestion of food, absorption of new nutrients from food and cleanation of solid food waste. So first we intake the food, then we process the food and then we waste the food. Digestion is the process of re breaking down the food into several components such as car um, Carbohydrates are released into glucose in black and the fat is released into the uh, lipids, black again, and etc. During the process, the physical and chemical breakdown of food occurs and then these uh, molecules are ingested by body. Food digestion takes uh, about 6 to 8 hours. And if we eat some fatty foods such as meat, uh, it's up to 10 hours or more. The follow organs then make up the gastrointestinal tracts such as mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and anus. The liver, pancreas and gallbladder are solid organs of digestive systems. As you may be aware, carbohydrates such as starch, sugar, uh, fat and protein within food can all function as sources of energy. The main source of energy is the body is obviously carbohydrates. They are extremely important for our muscles and the brain. And the, and the, um, the proteins and fat we take from energy dense food with high calorie content. Uh, for example, pasta, bread, oatmeal, and porridges, um, plants, oils, animals, meat, and cheese, and so on, and etc. The human body requires essential minerals and nutrients, which are also important, uh, such as magnesium and potassium. These minerals dissolved in water, so it's easy to reach the different parts of the body and keep the body healthy. Nervous system is also another biological system, which can be defined as an arena group of cells called neurons, specialized for the conduction of an impulse. The central nerve system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. The main structural element is the nerve cell or neuron. So, uh, what is the functional preparation of the body for physical activity? So the external demonstration of physical fitness of the person is provided by functioning of musculoskeletal system, respiratory, cardiovascular system and other body systems. They all work together in a joint action and the short words enable the final control movements, the muscles involved and the heart pumps the blood and central nerve system sends the signal. So they all act as one mechanism. Human motor activity of the person is characterized by various acts, so it's contraction of the muscles, movement of the body, movement of eyeballs, swallowing, breathing, and etc. Motor control includes reflexes as well as directed movements. When a person doesn't move, it's called hypokinesia, and the hypodynamia is decreasing strength or the power. 
Uh, external environment consists of four interacting components such as physical surrounding, which is atmosphere, water, soil, biological surrounding, flora and fauna, social environment, its human interactions within the society, and production environment, its uh, work and production of something. And another uh, component of the biological system is the mental. So mental state is quite an important and fatigue occurs is when a person sets in your brain energy levels information and the information rise and it become tired. Um, so information increase and the uh, fatigue arise. Mental fatigue usually result of stress. So long term stress can be brought out by various factors including challenging life events. He feels like cynicism, emptiness, mobility to focus, and even a sense of hopeless. I hope we covered everything in this lecture very briefly. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you at the next lecture.